Welcome back, everybody, to the Homa Dynasty here on College Football 25. We are in week seven, about halfway through our year, coming in on a three-game losing streak, going into a game against the Texas State Bobcats. So Bobcat on Bobcat crime coming up here in this next game. But first, let's focus on some more recruiting here with 60 hours left to spend before we jump into this game. We're probably a one week away from getting a verbal commitment from J.R. Lehan, that top strong safety at three stars, as no other schools have given him a scholarship offer so far. We're also close to breaking the top five for Frank Bad News, and we're close to the top three for the middle linebacker Chuck Madden, who replaced our top player right now in Chase Freeman. Close to a top five for Tevin Hippenhammer, and close to a top three for LaShawn Gray. Outside linebacker is still a need for us to target here in recruiting, and there are still several three-star prospects that have not received scholarships from any other school, but there are some top programs like Texas, Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia that are still targeting these guys, but if we offer a scholarship, I bet we could probably secure the services of at least one or two of these guys, which could help out our defense. We're going to add all of them to a recruiting board, and I think I want to scout. I saw that the highest ranked guy was Esteban Rizzo, so we'll try and scout him first. We don't have many points to use here, so let's got to be careful with how much we spend here. But he's got 78 strength, probably has decent awareness. Speed is going to be kind of mid-tier. Tackling we will probably need some work. We'll use... 10 more points on him. He's got 82 pursuit, which is pretty good for a run stopper for sure. I think I'll definitely offer him a scholarship. And we'll see how far that moves us up the board here. Because we're currently not in his top 8 or his top 10. We might as well offer scholarships to most of these guys before we can use the hours to scout. Because we're going to get some hours back soon here once we get some commitments here in these next couple of weeks. So I feel like we, we can afford to do this and hopefully we can crack the top eight for a couple of these guys who are still taking their time here with their commitments. But coming off our scoreless loss last week against South Alabama, it's time to take on the Texas State Bobcats led by an impact development player, Jordan McLeod, a red shirt senior. He's an improviser. He's got really good elusiveness in the pocket. He can break sacks. He can escape the pocket pretty well. Accuracies are pretty damn good across the board, and 90 throw on the run is very good. Um, he's got some good throw power as well. IQ is high with solid play action skills. He's just overall a really solid player. And at running back, they have quite the speeds to hear. The top player on the roster is Ismail Mahdi with 94 speed and 97 acceleration, 93 stamina, 95 quickness overall. Now his route running is not going to be great, but he is a very good and elusive player. If he finds room past his offensive line, it's going to be hard for us to stop this guy for sure. And he's backed up by power back Dion Hankins here, who's got 91 trucking, 83 strength, 97 toughness, really good injury rating too, good stiff arm, better hands than Mahdi does. And quickness, not as much. Not, he's not as fast as Mahdi is, but he still has some pop to his legs for sure. So their backfield is pretty darn strong with these two behind their quarterback. You have quite a speedy trio at receiver, starting with Joey Holbert here in 87 overall, with 91 speed, 92 acceleration, really good hands and catching traffic, and spec catch even is pretty solid too. He's a good short and medium route runner. And can also run deep routes as well. He's definitely kind of a, a, a jack of all trades, master of none kind of wideout. And then you've got Cole Wilson, an 85 overall receiver with 90 catching, 89 catching traffic. Better spec catch than Holbert has. He's got maxed out IQ. He's very quick with 90 speed. And also, just again, these guys have just a really solid offense here in the Sunbelt Conference. But their fastest starting receiver is Jaden Williams, 92 speed, 93 acceleration. Not as good of, of hands as the top two receivers on this team, but he's faster and will probably get open down the field more than the top two guys. Well, that's probably why he's on this team. 
And on defense, the impact player for them is going to be Ben Bell with 91 power moves, 87 finesse moves. He's not quite as good against the run, but he's still solid there and will definitely not let you just blow by him on most plays. So this guy got to watch out for him and got to keep Tyler Olsen safe behind this O-line. So here we go on the road. It's Bobcats taking on the Bobcats. Homa taking on Texas State in Texas on their home turf. Going to be a tough game. Our second ever conference game. Got to get back on track after a three-game losing streak. Now we're going to test out Slow Sim here today from a broadcast perspective. And Texas State will start with the football. Return brought out to... Their own 17-yard line, here we go. And Sunbelt Conference play once again. McLeod's offense takes over inside their 20-yard line, and they hand it off to Mahdi on the first play. He gains seven. Now, this does go pretty fast. It's a pretty fast-paced mode of going through a game, so we're going to try and get through two weeks. This game and our next one in week eight as well, so we'll see what happens, but Mahdi breaks a tackle, and... Is going to immediately move the chains for the hosting Bobcats. Free snap motion. They hand it off to Mahdi, but this time he's wrapped up for a loss. After three straight carries, they go right back to him. There's Bowie again on the tackle. Chase Freeman also teams up. That brings up third and seven. And he will go through the air for the first time. McLeod has time, and he's going to take off, and we have defenders ready for him. A five-yard gain, two yards shy of the first down. Oma takes over from their 19-yard line after a nice stop by our defense. We start with play action, and Olsen never had a chance to get rid of it. Two defenders got there in time. After a six-yard loss, it is second and long. Olsen looking deep, and it's broken up intended for Scooter Page. Long way to go on third down. Back to pass, and Olsen nearly took a safety. He's tackled at the two for another sack. The second of the game, this one from Ben Bell. This is not looking good, guys. Texas State takes over, starting from the Homa 34-yard line. They go right back to Ismail Mahdi. He jukes his way outside and has a big gain of 23 yards. They are already inside the red zone. Now they fake it to Mahdi, and it's a read option, but McLeod does not gain a whole lot. More pre-snap motion, another... Fake handoff, and Mahdi once again gets the carry. He gains four. Empty look from McLeod, looking for the end zone. He threw it right to us. Intercepted by Bowie, and this one's going all the way back unless Mahdi catches up at the 20, 10, and gone. Jaden Bowie with a 97-yard pick six, and Homa leads early in this one. Defense stepping up when the offense couldn't. What a play. Just a poor decision here by the quarterback, McLeod. And Bowie does the rest. A previous drive all goes to waste now. They get it back at their 26. Mahdi outside. Sheds one more tackle and gains five. Now McLeod keeps it and fools the defense, and he runs for a first down and more across the 40-yard line. McLeod, the touch pass to Wilson, a flag comes in as Freeman brings him down. That one's coming back, a hold against the offense. Second and forever, here's Mahdi on the carry. He picks up five. Almost showing blitz, but it backs off. And it's a dump-off pass. Nice tackle there by Freeman to end this possession. The defense came out strong. Can the offense answer and perhaps give us a two-score lead? 
This is Strickland trying to tumble ahead. Only three yards there, though, for him. Back to the air. Check down to Strickland. He loses all three he gained on first down. That makes it third and ten for the away team. Olsen looking deep down the field again, and he's got Foreman wide open. Dragged down at the 26-yard line, deep in Texas State territory. What a throw but by the senior quarterback. That is what I'm talking about. Here's a replay of that one. Just a perfect throw. Hit him right in stride. 53 yards. Now it's Chris Mills, by the way, getting beating coverage for Texas State as Strickland finds some running room and breaks a tackle on his way to a nice 18-yard pickup. Olsen setting up a screen, but he hung on too long. That is already the third sack for Texas State. After a 12-yard loss, little rollout, and a check down to McLawler, and he gains pretty much nothing here. Third and goal, 18 yards out from the end zone. We go empty. Olsen over the middle. McLawler can't hang on. So here comes Ian Wells for a field goal attempt. The kick is up, and it's good. Off the upright, maybe. But Toma leads 10-0 here on the road. Replay that one. That actually did bounce off the upright. That was way too close for comfort. And Texas State get it going here on the ground. Motti finds some room and is shoved ahead across their 30-yard line. They're going to try and go quick here. Might be our last play of the first quarter. McLeod fakes it to his running back and a diving play is made for a first down catch to close the quarter. But Homa leads 10-0 through one. From there, 44 on first and 10. Right back to Mahdi on the ground, but this time he is snuffed out by Van Claiborne. Right back to him again. He jukes one man out and breaks a tackle. Solomon just can't take him down. Mahdi already has 95 yards on only 11 carries. Well, 11 is a lot for barely playing one full quarter. They're all the way up to the home of 30 yard line once again. And Mahdi stays in, but he looks gassed right now. And a bust in coverage leads to another first down. More pre-snap motion for Texas State. They give it to the running back. That's Deion Hankins with a short gain of one. Third and goal. Can our defense once again step up here? Only a couple yards away. And we bring down Mahdi short of the goal line. That's Chase Freeman on the touchdown saving tackle. And Texas State is held to a field goal. The kick is up. And it is good. They're on the board. Seven twenty-five here to go in the first half. Olsen hands it off. Strickland is going backwards. Loss of four. Strickland goes out wide and gets the quick throw from Olsen and breaks a tackle. And he shows off the breakaway speed there for a nice pickup of 12. And that will set up third and shorts for the Homo Bobcats here on the road. We give it right back to him on the ground. He's got a nice gain and a first. Second down. Olsen. Pressure coming down the field. Broken up. Trying to find Page. Long third down attempt. And he threw it right to him. That's Chris Mills with the pick. Olsen just never saw him, I guess. Now both teams have a first half turnover. This was just a really bad decision, but a better play, I think, on defense by Mills on that little hitch route. And Texas State takes over once again in home territory, but so far, no touchdowns as McLeod is taken down. That is Taj Coles with the sack. 
The four-yard loss to bring up a screen on second down. Nice tackle there by Quincy Blue. Third and long coming up for Texas State. Cloud fakes the handoff and over the middle finds his target. Great first down, it's Jaden Williams. Cloud pumps and dumps it off. First down for Cole Wilson. From the five, it's a QB keeper. There's space to run and McLeod dives in for a game-tying touchdown. Texas State is back in the ball game. We are tied at 10 here on the road. Both quarterbacks have thrown picks leading to touchdowns as we almost get sacked there. But Strickland will somehow break a tackle and burst ahead across the 45. First and 10, we fake it now to Strickland. Olsen trying to create some time for himself and he finds Foreman for another first down. Out of the warning. Texas State brings five, and Olsen throws his second pick of the half. And he is the only guy that can make a play on the ball, and he will not get there in time. Texas State takes it to the house. Caleb Culp the pick six, a 60-yarder. And back-to-back -back picks thrown by Olsen have given Texas State their first lead. I cannot wait to recruit a new quarterback for this team, guys. Can you tell? Olsen trailing back. What is he doing? He somehow stays on his feet and just gets rid of it, but almost took a really bad safety. That was close. Just got to throw the ball a bit quicker here, man. Going for a screen, and he just barely gets it off. But it's incomplete. Right now, our quarterback is costing us dearly in this game. Once again, third and 10, we just give up on the drive and hand it off. Wow. For I think the third time, Texas State takes over in Homa territory. We bring pressure, but it does not get there in time. And that is complete to Joey Hobart. I believe that's my, that might be his first catch of the game so far. He's barely been targeted here in the first half. McLeod, though, hit as he threw it. It goes off a lineman's helmet. Empty look. And a first down conversion. That's caught by Connor Fox, their starting tight end. First down and up the seam. It's caught for a touchdown. Jaden Williams. And just like that, after a 10-0 start for Homa... Texas State has scored 24 unanswered points, PAT pending. Third and six. Olsen taken down again. Four first half sacks for the Bobcats. Texas State takes over inside the home of 40. I mean, this is just crazy starting field position once again. That's an eight-yard pickup. Back to throw again, and batted away by Noah Collins Jr. But Texas State stays out there on fourth down, trying to get in field goal range. With one or two more plays here, they give it to Mahdi. He's got some room, and a patient run will give them enough to get a field goal off before halftime. So out comes their kicker. This one comes from 43 yards away. It is up, and it is through the uprights. 27 unanswered points entering halftime for Texas State. Well, I thought we had a pretty good start to the game, which we did. We led 10-0, but all of a sudden, that second quarter just went the complete opposite way. And we trail by 17 points at the break. The defense has collapsed after a couple of good drives to open the game, and the offense has been terrible thanks to the man under center. Not what you want to see. 
Oma takes over to shine the 20-yard line. This game might already be over, but if we can establish the ground with Strickland, things might open up through the air. Give it right back to him. He sheds one more tackle and has to reach across for a three-yard gain. What does Olsen give us here on third down? Facing pressure, he delivers a strike for a first down at CJ Peaks. Page in motion, he will get the touch pass. Leaps over a lineman, but probably should have taken that one outside instead of trying to cut it back in. Only a one yard pickup there. Nine to go on. Second down from the 47 yard line. Play fake. Olsen dumps it off McClawler. I'm surprised he could not break that tackle. Tyson in motion, pressure coming on Olsen, but it's picked up well. Heaving it for the end zone, batted away by Joshua Eaton. And for some reason, the offense is sitting out there on fourth and five. I don't like the call, really. Pressure, though, is picked up again, and it's going to be a first down and more for Homa. Inside their 25-yard line. And the pocket collapses quickly. Olsen goes down. Sack number five. That is the third sack already for Ben Bell. 47-yard field goal is up and good from Ann Wells. It's back within two scores, but we are not scoring touchdowns right now. And in motion, he will get the touch pass and gain five. Cloud hands it off. Motti has the first. Right back to him. He's got room to run. Another broken tackle. This guy is juking people out. He's breaking tackles. He is reaching across for first downs. He will go wide here on second down for a screen pass and a first down. Taken down at the sideline. Cloud waits for the screen to set up, but Mahdi is going backwards. Loss of two. Home defense trying to get off the field here. A Cloud's pass is batted away by Bowie. And they will try a long range field goal from 58 yards away. It's got enough power and he hits the field goal. What the hell was that? This is college, sir. Relax. Well, we are in trouble here, guys. 13 to 30. We trail in this third quarter. We're halfway through it. The ground game has been effective, but you can't really ride that the rest of the way because you're losing by so much, I feel like. Olsen finds Williams in his first catch of the game comes while we're down by three scores. Not what you want for your number one wide receiver. Back to throw again. Page across the 40 in a six. Third down. Olsen just throws it away and this drive leads nowhere. And on the ensuing punt return, Texas State would take it all the way to the house. This game is over. Good grief. Every side of the ball, every facet of this team has failed here in this game. Wow. Langston Anderson with the punt return for a touchdown. They don't have a defensive touchdown, a special team touchdown, and several offensive touchdowns too. This is bad. The PAT makes it 37 to 13. Oh. 
another punt return touchdown. What is happening? I was barely paying attention. Langston Anderson, back-to-back -back punt return TDs. What am I watching? We're getting curb stomped. Here's a replay, I guess. I'm just gonna sit to the end, man. This is bad. The Texas State Bobcats, after trailing by 10, would go on a 54 to six run in the following three quarters, and they absolutely bludgeon the home of Bobcats. And this team is definitely in trouble here in year number one, folks. We have lost four straight games. This one, by far the worst of them all to this point. Wow. No offensive touchdowns here in this game for Homa. Similar story to our last game. Two turnovers, which one of them led to a pick six. The other led to a touchdown on the ensuing drive by Texas State. We allowed two punt returns for touchdowns. And this was just a horrible day across the entire team. Ismail Mahdi puts together over 170 yards on the ground. No touchdowns, though, for him. Receiving-wise, they get a lot of different guys involved. Two passing touchdowns, one for Bo Sparks and one for Jaden Williams. And they had like six sacks at least. Four and a half coming from one guy in Ben Bell. And um, yeah, this was a day to forget completely for the entire team. It is not all bad news though, folks. J.R. Lehan, a three-star strong safety out of Knoxville, Tennessee, has committed to the Bobcats, finally. Welcome to Homa. And we have reached the top three schools for Chuck Madden. Still easily first place right now for influence. Should get him to commit here in these next couple of weeks, I think. That frees up plenty of hours to use for scouting. So let's focus on these outside linebackers once again. That's Devon Rizzo. We're going to finish scouting him completely. He's got 80 speed, 75 tackle. Solid strength. Should be a pretty good run stopper, but he's got to work on that block shed for sure. And the play rec too. But I think any three stars that we can muster are going to be really good for us. And I do want to crack his top eight, so we might as well put together a pretty big action for him. I'll spend probably 50 just to send the house and hopefully we can crack that top eight or so. I mean... I think we should because no other schools have yet to offer a scholarship, so that would make a whole lot of sense, I think, if he allowed us to make that top 10 or top 8. Now, other schools, we actually have a better shot at making it because they have a lot more to go until they will commit to a school. Let's look at Dennis Oman. He's got pretty good acceleration, pretty good agility. Zone coverage is absolutely terrible, but he is a power rusher with 74 power moves. Pretty good starting place, I would say. And I definitely want to spend some actions on him. I'll do search social media. And then I will also do an action or two for Nathan Stoffer. I'll scout him once. And then we'll use the same influence action on him as well. But now we've got the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, led by Tate Roadmaker. Now, they don't have a roster nearly as good as Texas State, but they still have way higher ratings than we do right now over here in Homa. This guy is a pocket passer through and through. He will not be taken off outside the pocket. So expect a lot more throws this next game from this opponent. Yeah, their roster is nowhere near as good as Texas State's, but their defense looks to be pretty solid, led by... Desmond Baker and Jalen Sims. Plus, their defensive tackles look pretty good with Jalen Williams and D'Amico Rowland. So, going to be another tough game, I think, which most games will be going forward because they're all better than we are. But, should be maybe a closer game, I would hope. We head across state lines to Mississippi, taking on the Southern Miss Golden Eagles on the road. Back-to-back -back road games and hopefully trying to avoid our fifth straight loss. This is not going well here in year number one, but you know what? We are like the worst rated team across the entire 
college football landscape, so I can't be too surprised here. Those first two wins, though, were kind of a smokescreen. Oklahoma takes over from their 17-yard line. Only four touchdowns to five picks on the year for Tyler Olsen. Makes you want to pull your hair out. But here we go. Can the offense score a touchdown here in this game? Hopefully so. There's space. Keontae Tyson makes a move, and it has a nice gain of 23 on the opening play. First and 10, Homa. And off to Strickland. Nothing there. From the 40, right back to him again up the middle, and he's hit down after a short gain of four. Five wide on third down. Olsen, pressure from behind. He has to throw it away, and just like that, the drive is over. Man, the offense just cannot put anything together right now and slow sim. Here comes Southern Mississippi. Clark on the carry. Drags Van Cleborne for three. Now they give it to their backup tailback. Not a whole lot there. It's third and four. The Golden Eagles. A lot of golden teams that we've faced in these first seven games of the season. That one is checked down, and they are short by a yard, and they will have to punt. Just shy of our 30-yard line. Strickland just not getting any holes to open up here. This offensive line not off to a good start here on the ground. That's second and 10 for Homa. They bring four. Good protection, and Olsen completes it to Javi and Foreman for a first down. Olsen fakes it to Strickland and finds Williamson for a short four-yard pickup. From midfields, the give. Strickland tumbles ahead for four. Right back to him, but the run is stuffed again. Eight yards on five runs, and Homa has punted the ball twice now on their first two drives. First down for Southern Mississippi. There's a hole for Clark. First down. He goes out wide on first and ten, and over the middle, it's wide open and caught across the Homa 30-yard line. That is Kyer and Heath with their reception at tight ends. And just like that, they are driving down the field. Right back to Clark. Gonna cut it back inside. He picks up five. Back to throw on third down. And Roadmaker links up in the end zone with his receiver. It is a touchdown for Southern Mississippi. The Golden Eagles strike first with Larry Simmons at the pylon. Great throw right there. And he beats Collins in coverage. Just over two to go here in the first quarter for Homa. Now trailing once again. Olsen. Gets rid of it. There's a flag down as it's broken up down the field. Intended for Javi and Foreman. And it's going to be an offensive penalty. That'll take us halfway back towards our own end zone. Dump off. Caught by McClawler. Six-yard gain. Four-man rush. And the pocket once again collapses. The offensive line is having their fair share of problems here in these last two games. Third and a century. Olsen just has to get rid of it. And it goes incomplete. A start at the home of 41. Where have we seen this before? Roadmaker's got time to throw and he had a man open. That would have been a touchdown, but he just missed the throw. Now on the grounds. And another first down for Southern Mississippi. That's Chandler Pittman. Roadmaker gives it again to Pittman, but this time Freeman's there to meet him. 
Another nice tackle by him, but nobody else right now is stepping up on either side of the football. It's just Chase Freeman right now. It's going to end the first quarter. Homer trails by seven. Second and 11. They fake it on the ground. It's caught. And inside the one are the Golden Eagles. Goal to go. And wide open for a touchdown. It's caught. Roadmaker, his second passing touchdown of the day. And Homa trails by two scores early in this one. Little RPO. It's picked off, but a flag is down. Please be on the offense. Noah Collins Jr. with the INT. And it is going to be on the offense. Homa takes over at the 22-yard line. Here we go. We're finally in business. Thanks to our defense. Play fake. Looking for the end zone. It's picked off. Olsen, no. He just gave it right back on the ensuing play. Oh, my God. Michael Carraway with the pick. Just undercutting the route for Williamson. I can't believe these performances by our senior quarterback. This is horrible. Roadmaker keeps it. That is not the right idea. We saw his speed. It's not very good. He loses two. Third and nine. Here's our chance. Never mind. First down. But the ball comes out. It's recovered by Solomon. Will this one stand? Ball jar loose by DeMarvin Holland. And Mims, who caught an earlier touchdown, could not hang on to the football. And we do take over. There is no booth review. Oma gets it back, and we promptly lose four yards. This is a horrible offensive showing worse than our last game somehow. That's pretty incredible. Second of 14. Olsen. Incomplete for Foreman. These last two games, I think, show us the true difference between us and every other program. As that pass goes promptly incomplete. We punt for the fifth time in the first half. Clark on the give on the very next play. Runs for a first down. And they're already back in plus territory once again. This defense is out here way too much. The offense has given us no chance to win this game or even score a point. Another first down inside the 30. Back to throw. Roadmaker find his target up the numbers. He's already got over 150 passing yards and two touchdowns to boot. 11 yards from the end zone. Dumped off. Gain of four. Screen set up. Clark gets in the end zone untouched. And Southern Miss leads Homa by three touchdowns. What is going on? Third and seven. Time to throw and Page find some room to run. For across midfield, it's a miracle. Quick throw. Williamson somehow hung on to that one in traffic. Nice scrap right there. Are we about to actually get points on the board? Say it ain't so. Go to protection. Underneath. First down for Peaks. Five wide on second and ten. Olsen underneath again. It's Strickland for a first down. Empty look on second and goal. Olsen's pass is caught for a touchdown by Spencer Strickland. It took the offense a game and a half or 
two games and a half to get back in the end zone. That is pretty crazy, but we score before halftime. Game's not exactly over. We got to keep scoring like that the rest of the way to come back and win this game. They will start with the ball here to open the second half. Up 21-7. to Play fake on first down and caught deep down the field. Quick throw over the middle, caught, and he is absolutely gone. Another touchdown for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, this game is definitely over. Mims makes up for his earlier fumble and now has his second score of the game. Homa drops their fifth straights. 42 to 16. This has been an absolutely terrible episode for the offense. I mean, this was just completely unexpected, and we give up five passing touchdowns to Tate Roadmaker. My God. It does not get much worse than that right there, guys. Tyler Olsen goes 27 for 45 through the air. Had over 340 through the air, but one touchdown, one costly INT, which just was a just a terrible throw. And the ground game was not even used at all in this game because we were losing for the entirety of it. So that was pretty bad. Strickland, four yards on eight carries. 0.5 average, just insanely bad. At least we got a couple of three stars, right? So we finally have our quarterback of the future, Jason Gallimore, out of Montgomery, Alabama. Pray to God he is better than Tyler Olsen. I'm pretty sure he will be. It's not going to be that hard to do. Welcome to Homa. He'll be here next year. Can't wait. We are still first place for Finau, Saoto, and Tevin Hippenhammer. We're number two right now for Ben Nimbitz. Ole Miss still heavily in first place and probably about to earn that verbal commitment from him. So probably got to bow out of those sweepstakes. For number two for Alton Shedd behind the Jaguars. Or top three for Udo and Chase Nickerson. And we'll see where things go from there. We're probably going to get LaShawn Gray for sure, but you might as well offer a scholarship to Nicholson here, who has no other scholarships right now. Could be a really good blocking tight end, so let's just go ahead and offer him a scholarship and get two tight ends for next season. That would really help out the offense, I think, both on the ground and through the air. And I am going to schedule a visit for Abi Amiri here because Southern Miss and I forget who that third school is, but they have both offered visits right now too as we are in second place. I'm also going to up the recruiting for him and also might as well get a hard sell here too. So... We'll choose team player because that will match his motivations. Uh, beef up the offensive line, make it better, make it younger, and just hopefully that, and just hope that they, uh, these guys can all progress pretty well after their first year or two. And we'll also try and schedule a visit. But I guess it's bugged and we can't. So hopefully we don't. I mean, hopefully the the uh, the uh, hard sell will overcome that visit for the Golden Eagles because if not, it's kind of a waste of points. I'm thinking of playing Reggie Cole at left tackle, but if we don't, we could always look at one of the, these other guys who don't currently have any offers right now. Now, Nickerson is a right tackle, not a left tackle. I would like an actual left tackle at that same spot. Might offer JD Cobb here. We'll target him. I'm gonna offer a scholarship and I'm going to scout him as well. And he's going to be a gem three-star. If we can get two gem three-star tackles to beef up the O-line, this guy has just below 80 pass block and pass block finesse. That would be huge for Jason Gallimore next year. Definitely got to spend some hours on him and hopefully crack his top eight before it's too late. So we'll do... We'll do DM the player. And we'll do search social media. And I'm also going to offer a scholarship to Dante Jones, who has no other offers yet. Now we have 26 of 35 scholarships used and no hours left to spend here in week number nine. And we enter it facing three and four Troy. 
We have four games left after this one. Hopefully we can just get two more wins because if we can, then we will not have a problem keeping most guys around that are thinking about transferring. So we got games against Troy, then Louisiana, then we got Georgia State who's currently one in five worse than we are somehow. Then we got the Warhawks and then Old Dominion. So we'll see what happens the rest of the way folks, but we have yet to win a Sunbelt Conference game. So we'll see if we can get one under a belt here before the year's all over. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching as always. Please like, subscribe, comment down below your thoughts on the episode and slow simming. And I'll see you guys in weeks 9 and 11, taking on Troy and the Raging Cajuns. Peace out. Have a great day.